Hi everyone. In this part, we are going to look at the very important topic of automatic neighbor relationship or ANR. So ANR is an automated way of adding and deleting neighbor cells. ANR relies on user equipment or UE to detect neighbor and unknown cells and report them to the serving base station. When we looked at the self configuration example in the last video, we saw that the base station contacts the network management system or NMS and downloads the basic configuration parameters like the TAC, PLMN identities, global cell ID, power information, etc. The physical cell ID can be assigned or it can be automatic. So let us very quickly look and understand PCI or physical cell identity. In LT, PCI can take 504 values that is from 0 to 503. And PCI is calculated as 3 times SSS plus PSS. So the primary synchronization signal or PSS has 3 values that is 0, 1 and 2. The secondary synchronization signal or SSS has 168 values that is from 0 to 167. The only difference in 5G NR is that the SSS has 336 values that is from 0 to 335. So 5G NR supports 1008 unique PCIs. Now one of the problems that happen especially with femtocells and other small cells is PCI collision as can be seen here. So a UE is in the coverage of two cells which has the same PCI values. So here the UE may not be able to access either of these two cells due to the interference generated. Another issue is known as the PCI confusion. Here the UE is in, uh, in a cell with PCI5 which is the blue one. It reports information about two cells with PCI2 which are the pink ones. Now the current cell, the blue one, doesn't know where to hand over the UE2, the top pink one or the bottom pink one. Of course, there are ways around it, uh, in, but in general, PCI confusion can lead to higher number of handover failures and call drops. Right, so let's now jump to an example explaining ANR. So let's say the red cell with PCI of 165 has just been switched on and it's figured out that cell 17 and 51 are its immediate neighbors. It cannot see any other cell. So on one uh, side of this cell is a river. So uh, it cannot see the cell with PCI 99. When it configures the UE4 measurements, it will ask the UE to report all the cells it can see. So the UE will then report the red cell as a detected cell. So let us look at the ANR procedure steps here. The base station will configure measurements in the UE. The UE starts measuring the neighbors. For simplicity, we have just assumed that there is just one cell uh, that the UE is seeing. The UE sends measurement report back to the serving cell using the physical cell ID to identify different EU trans cells. Now here the UE includes the measurements of the cell with physical ID uh, 99 as a detected cell. The base station receives the report and instructs the UE to report the global cell ID for the cell with PCI of 99. So the UE uh, gets the global cell ID by reading the BCCH or the broadcast control channel of the detected cell and then it reports the global cell ID to the serving cell. The serving cell updates the neighbor cell list. It then reports the updated uh, neighbor information to OAM and gets the IP address of this new detected cell from the OAM. And if required, the serving E node B will establish a new X2 interface 
with the target E node B. So a thing to note here, I use the term O and M or OAM and NMS or EMS interchangeably. So 3GPP defines a generic framework for realizing an OAM architecture, right? So OAM is operations and maintenance. And OAM frameworks are implemented as element management system and network management system. Okay, so it's just uh, the framework and the implementation. So these are the actual signaling messages that are exchanged during the ANR procedure. Worth noting that during this X2 setup procedure, which is the final step, the E node B's exchange information about all the cells they are controlling, including their global cell identities, physical cell identities, and the carrier frequencies. The last field might include frequencies that the original base station was not even previously aware of, which it can use to populate the list of neighboring frequencies in SIP5. So this was a very short tutorial on automatic neighbor relationship or automatic neighbor relations uh, or ANR. As always, questions, comments, suggestions and corrections are welcome. In the meantime, keep safe and see you again soon. Goodbye.